if survival happens in total falsehood how is it useful if our life which means our survival the biology happens in total falsehood the world is false the body is false the mind is false the whole creature is false an illusion what is the use of it actually akash is saying progress progress of false is also false isn't it progress will not become true yes benjamin is saying there is a possibility of discovering what really is yes very good answer by benjamin the false has a potential to know the truth that is something amazing isn't it nick is saying opportunity for no- for knowledge yes vipin is saying learning yes yeah and the, these two answers essentially are equal to benjamin's answer pratip is saying an awareness results in individual which is falsehood survival helps in knowing oneself yes the <laughs> use of false is simply knowing that this is false the use of the individual is simply in knowing that i am an illusion and it simply dismisses itself it simply takes leave from the stage anybody else wants to add to this drama of falsehood rajit singh evolution which may finally help in liberation yes i agree this thing is false but it evolves up to the point where the truth can be recognized and some people can argue that it's not completely false the appearance means it is my own form although it is appearing as something totally fake <laughs> but it's, it's not that false is 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 not there is that this totally absent some people can argue like this as you approach non duality as you approach purity the answers are less defined the answers can be many there can be many points of views there is no surety certainty so anyhow akshita is saying with the help of the body we can know the truth yes that which cannot know itself takes a false appearance to somehow reflect itself in it so even though we keep saying that you know it's total false the world is false and the body is false do not get attached to it and so on without it there is nothing actually which is bigger experiencer or the existence and this is another tricky question very tricky question and this is designed to bring out the ignorance in the person that the experiencer is connected to the individual because those who are still thinking that i have my own private experiencer just like i have my own tv in the house and my own car and my own driver who drives the car i have my own servant experiencer whose job is to experience everything some people think like this and this question is designed to bring out that ignorance never see the experiencer as connected to the body or to the individual it has no relation at all these things are objects so existence is the experiencer not the individual it may appear like this to this ignorant individual <laughs> the ego claims the experiencer also just like it it can claim anything isn't it if it wishes it can claim everything is mine like it can claim the land as mine isn't it so it can as well say the air is mine and it can say the rain is mine the cloud and the sky above my land is also mine like the countries claim their air space isn't it <laughs> that the space above my land is mine and the, there is no end of stupidity of the ego it can claim the experience or the existence as me and myself is not like this at all there is no me now next question vibration is change and what is changing very frequently asked question so i'm going to ask the group again our satsang what is changing what is the claim that give me the change give me the smallest change and i can give you the whole creation this is the claim once the vibration is given then it is very easy to explain the whole illusion it is easy to manipulate it also into anything but then what is changing there somebody knows akshita is saying experiences we 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 always say that the vibrations are the cause of the experiences the vibrations are picked up by the senses and then they are turned into experiences this is the theoretical question obviously the experiences appear to change it appears to change benjamin is saying there is only change without anything changing very good but very cryptic <laughs> nobody will understand this thing satya is saying potential potential is always potential nothing happens in the potential that is the definition of the potential we can say that the potential has 
ability to manifest some kind of change if the potential change then it it won't remain a potential isn't it it will become actual rajit is saying possibilities that that is again potential only akash is saying dwait what do you mean dwait <laughs> you need to speak in english we have a different terminology here rajiv is saying nothing is changing it is only an illusory appearance that something is changing very good very good that this is good answer i think rajiv's answer then why do we say there is there are vibrations but the pissing emptiness is infinite potential even change can be there yes although you know we don't understand at least i don't understand it how the potential can cause a change but it is there what can we do bit to pan change is perceived due to comparison of memory there is no change actually yes comparison of memory is a very good explanation of change because you know there is no time so there cannot be change this is the fundamental observation of everybody all of you will agree that there is no time so how can there be change because change requires time so first there is potential they are compared you know there is a possibility of comparison and then a change is perceived and out of that change a difference is perceived i'm sorry and out of that difference change and time both are created actually everything is static the dynamic thing is simply you can say a series of comparisons but uh, at least i don't understand how this is being done so probably if you research more will we can dig it out we can explore it more so far i have reached this much you know what our bit of panis said i have reached this this much depth of it and nick is saying this is a model for the illusion we can only say there is change but there is no substance only emptiness it is unknowable yes ultimately <laughs> we need to rest our intellect and we can simply let go it is what it is cannot be known okay parthi has question experiencer shines the activity that i am the experiencer experiencer also shines anything that appears as it is the conscious presence what is the eternal state of existence with respect to above how out of three terms that is experiencing or turiya or experiencer which when we can call as eternal which one we can call as the eternal state of existence that is now purely matter of choice isn't purely matter of what people think about it we can call it anything if you want but i have called it the experiencing as you know experiencing is the only state just now we said and therefore we sometimes say there is only experiencing we drop the word state also state of what you will say state of what existence is never without experiencing they are the same actually one and the same so state of existence just to calm down the intellect a little bit oh there is something but what is it doing people ask human question they need to know what everybody is doing you know in their neighborhood so existence what is it doing experiencing that is the only state but it is experiencing only i mean as a noun not as a verb the thing is doing anything it is being experiencing pratib is saying actually in one video it is said awareness in deep sleep is the eternal state of existence yes yes there can be more explanations of the state of the existence what what is what does it mean that look the the states like waking and projecting and whatever they are like bubbles of dream that happen in the background of deep sleep and the deep sleep is simply a state of experiencing only we have changed its name with respect to the states of the mind so this view is very good as soon as you are in the duality when the student is uh, has not reached non duality this can be a good explanation because there can be question you see uh, sometimes the existence appear as me in this human in the waking state sometimes it appears in the dream state or projected state or sleep state any other state so what is its fundamental state and this is we are still in the duality here and this answer is satisfactory in that case but when you asked as from the perspective of the experiencer like, like what it is then is it being the experiencer is it doing the experiencing or is busy creating stuff whatever so in that case we always say that they are all equal these all words are equal 
experiencer, experience, experiencing existence. They are names of one. And yes, that same thing is in deep sleep and awareness and whatever. Same. Some people are going to explain Samadhi as deep sleep, equal to deep, deep sleep. There are some kinds of Samadhis where the thoughts stop, where all the activity stops. It looks like it has stopped. It, is, it goes very deep. It becomes minute. So they will, they will say that it is like awareness in deep sleep. Now I have become pure existence. Especially in Buddhism, this notion is there. They will say that you need to know the emptiness. Do this one exercise. Do this practice. Try to reach that final level where there is no activity at all. And you will witness the true state. And in Advait we say, look, don't bother about these things. <laughs> this is, our current state is Samadhi. The mental activity does nothing at all to the emptiness. Realize it is not there. You don't need to do any practice then. So depending on the inclination of the seeker or the student, something is told, you see. Different views in different traditions. Every tradition will assign different states also. But uh, finally, in the Advait, we say that they are all illusory states. The final state is that which is most natural. How to come in that state? And this is very easy. You don't need to come in that any state. It's always there. And I like this idea a lot. A very lazy idea, isn't it? You don't need to do anything to be in the absolute state. Just know. And I agree completely. You have, must have seen the trend uh, on the path of knowledge or especially in the Advait tradition that uh, anything that we try to do or try to be or try to get, it's already there. All, all that was shown was, you know, drop your ignorance. It is already there. Oh, let me do this, Guruji. No, no, drop your ignorance. It is already there. I want to be this. I drop your ignorance. You are already this. The same way, when the student goes and tells the Guru, I want to be in this ultimate state. And he says, drop your ignorance, you are already there. You must have seen this trend here. So, I think we can blindly believe now that, yes, my state is absolute already. Without counting the <laughs> levels of the mind, without count, counting the illusory state that we need to get rid of first, to come in Turiya or whatever, Namadi. I am very happy being what is right now, right here. This gives final rest. This gives you the biggest peace possible. It is now eternal vacation for a seeker. Enjoy. That is why the definition of the final state is so important. If you define it wrongly, you will try to achieve it. And I am pretty sure you will never get it. Anuradha is saying awareness never differentiates between good and bad. Is it the conclusion when compared to other paths? I am trying to understand your question. But uh, no, I don't think. Even when you compare with the other paths, we never conclude like this. Actually, we say exactly opposite. That when, when you are in awareness, you will clearly know the difference between good and bad. Without awareness, you are following your conditioning, isn't it? With awareness, knowledge, intelligence, the difference will be made clear. Day and night. That is the conclusion. How did you got this kind of confusion? I don't know. Did you did you hear me saying this thing somewhere? Yes, we stay as witness. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. But when it comes to action, we prefer something which is good. By we, I mean this creature, the human. The witness never does anything, as you know. Simply witnessing. The witness has no preference. Witness has no preference. The witness does not differentiate the experiencer. By witness, we mean the experiencer. It has absolutely no bias towards anything. Pure. But uh, awareness means some kind of knowledge, isn't it? Which is in the mind. Now this mind has a preference. It wants to do one action. It does not want to do the other actions. It has this. The awareness simply illuminates. Look what is going on in the mind. It does not do more than that. Then the mind itself decides what is good and what is bad. Yes, the conditioning can leak into it a little bit. But after few repetitions, new impressions are formed. New conditioning happens which overrides the old, which was not so wholesome, which was causing suffering and so on. So this is how the 
knowledge of the experiencer actually brings about a change in the creature. Although the experiencer is not concerned, it remains unaffected by what the creature is doing or whether it is changing for the good or not. This benefit is taken by the creature, the jeeva or the individual. Even awareness is not going to do the differentiation. It is going to illuminate the activity that is going on. That is preferring one action over the other. That is illuminated. And the intellect can catch it. See whether it is really good or bad. Otherwise people who are unaware, without any knowledge, they are simply propelled into action. Like impulsive people. <laughs> whatever is their thought, is their speech and is their action. There is no gap. There is no analysis. They do not stop. They do not analyze. They do not foresee the consequences. So awareness simply gives you pause. That look, watch. Even if you stop for two minutes, in the, there can be change in the behavior. This is something different from the learned behavior, which we say our conditioning. You can be trained to say sorry and thank you and you know, so on. But you can see people are just robotically saying it. But you can realize the difference when the person is really sorry and really thankful. Then you can see in their eyes, there is awareness there. The, the awareness overrides the conditioning. This is the magical thing about awareness. How can it lead to the good behavior or good kind of conduct? There is an assumption that that which is good is already known by us. Even at the level of mind, it knows what is the good action. The thing is, because of the impressions and the conditioning, it's not able to do it. Somehow, that, that habit forces it to do whatever was Im imprinted there. Now, the stopping gives a chance for the ingrained goodness in us to arise. Some people say it is like this. See, there can be a difference of opinion here also. But yes, I have seen that people, the preference of people change without training, without telling them, look, this is good, this is bad. You don't need to tell them. It happens automatically. And it happens in my case also. Sometimes my conditioning forces me to do something and then repenting happens automatically. When the awareness arises, finally, there is... Total knowing that, you know, whatever happened was not good. Who told me it is not good? Nobody. There is something inside us which already knows what is good, what is not. Awareness gives it a chance to arise. And the intellect, if it is well developed, then prefers it. it overrides the lower layers. It's very simple. The mechanism is very simple. So in common language we say, see and then do. Think and then do. Understand and then do. Don't simply jump into doing. This is, you know, wise men say like this, old men, because they have a lifetime time of experience of making mistakes. So hopefully Anuradha's confusion is cleared.